Welcome everybody to Saves Together, the podcast about playing games together, whether that means co-op or passing the controller back and forth or just playing the same game at the same time. It doesn't matter how, it only matters that it's together because when you save together, you stay together. I'm Craig McGowan. I'm Grace Novak. And this is episode 59. That means we're 10 away. Huh? We are 10 away from uh, something, from a whole other number. And today's episode is our shout outs for 2020, which is kind of how we do game of the year. Um, it's less about like competition and saying this is the absolute number one game and more just like, I don't know, talking about cool games we played and stuff we liked. Just a, just a 2020 review in, in gaming and co-op games, you know, is the highlight, of course. But there's there's single player games on this list, too. So right. hopefully you find some good recommendations of things that we played that maybe you haven't tried yet. But I'm sure there'll be plenty on here that I like everyone's played. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. And one thing to note, any game we did an episode on this year is also viable. It's not just games that released in 2020. Mm-hmm. If we did an episode... We count it on our list because it's our 2020, not not yours. Not, yeah. Screw you. It's about us. This is all about me. And speaking of you, first we like to open with solo time, what we've been playing by ourselves in a not co-op fashion. And Grace, what have you been playing? I started my third PS5 game after beating Bug Snacks and Miles Morales, so which is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And I played Odyssey, which I'm pretty sure... I talked about on this podcast a while ago once I beat it last but you year. Didn't, you didn't play Origins though, right? No. What What about Odyssey attracted you? I like Greek mythology. Okay. And then so now... Also, that was the first one where you could play as, as a girl character. Oh, okay. You couldn't do that in Origin. Uh, and then so now are you playing because you like Vikings or are you playing because you liked that other one? So, you know what I mean? Did I think the, it's did a little bit of both. the other one hook you? Okay. It's a little bit of both. I uh, also like that, once again, I can play as like the female version and that's fun that's just fun for me you know did you try out or do you know how the one where you you like switch between the two i i didn't i'm kind of tempted to try and see like when does it switch i'm just curious like what's (laughs) what it considers canon in in each moment because it really makes me wonder like especially for the romantic encounters in this game which are pretty casual but just like kind of random and on on both sides i i i've had sex with men i've had sex with women and uh that's all good but i don't know it's interesting i'm just wondering would the game switch me for certain encounters I that, that's I what i'm curious about so i could probably yeah. give that a shot but the other game didn't have this feature of, right. of switching i think that's an interesting way to handle it it is interesting where it's like you know what it doesn't actually matter because also if you're fluid that's kind of cool yeah <laughs> like, um, i want to be a man today. how often do you go back to the animus is that maybe it switches every time you go back to reality? i haven't been back since the first time which it already it took it took me about an hour or two to even get to out of the animus the first time Mm -hmm. and then i've now been playing for 25 hours and i haven't been back oh well then my theory does not stand (laughs) (laughs) so no i think now that you said that i'll I'll give it a shot and see what it's like because i can always change it back so like i don't mind um but it's been really fun i mean i just i do really like being a viking more than actually i thought i would i love the raids like just all my my whole squad just coming out and bashing people's faces in indiscriminately and stealing all the loot. Yeah, it's fun. You know, it's cathartic in some ways. I I I think it once again like all the Assassin's Creed games, I find it too overwhelming in its scope, too much to do, too mm-hmm. much to collect. That's always a problem. But I just end up like eventually like giving up on collecting things and then going through the story and I have fun. So I beat Odyssey. I plan on beating this one too just cuz I've I've gotten this far, so I don't actually know how long it is. I hope it's not like incredibly much longer. But I'm course. still, I'm still having fun. I'm still that's having good. fun. Like I'm not, I'm not like, oh, I want, I want to put this down now. Um, so that's 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 really all I've been playing since we last spoke, as far as what's new. Nice. What have you been playing? I've pretty much only been playing the same thing I was playing last time. Yakuza. Yakuza like a dragon. Um, I still really like it. I think. I, I'm wrestling in my brain with, do I like this better than the other, the brawlers? I don't remember if I talked about this last time, but I'm still, if I did, I'm still deciding and I don't know. I find myself kind of tired of and frustrated with the random encounters, but I, I, I hate random encounters yeah. now in RPGs. I'm I mean, finding can, myself like, like even trying to go back to an older Final Fantasy game is difficult. Yeah, you can dodge them because you see them. 
and most of the time you could go a different oh, route. So it's not random encounters. But what I but I guess then I'm calling it the wrong thing. But it's the random fights on the street that it's hard. It's not like it's you have to go out of your way to dodge them. You're not just like you can't just run right past it and roll or something. So and, it's kind of in between. Yeah. Because most games RPGs like modern RPGs now where you can see the enemies, it's there's ways, plenty so of ways to dodge. Pokemon in the wild area. You know how you would see you see the little like what. Oh, yeah. In the wild yeah. area, you see, like, Pikachu running around, and you could literally just go to the left or right of it. Yeah. In this, they have a vision cone, and it's very wide, and if you run at all near them, they'll see you. So you have to kind of walk past oh, them so on like the stealth? other side of the street. Like, they, if they see you, but not like, really. Pokemon, it, they, they fight you? Or do you have to I mean, run it's, into it's, them? It's a very... If, if you want to think of it that way, they can... They have great eyes, right? <laughs> okay. It's It's relatively hard to not get attacked. So while, yes, you can see it, it's a lot of work to go and not fight them so then you get into these fights all the time and i do like the combat but i just i'm doing it so much it's like repetitive you know, yeah that i don't know it doesn't hurt the game but if you're not having fun doing it if you're not looking forward to running into the fights then it's not very fun but the, the rest of the game is great the open right. worldness the, the all the yakuza normal stuff so it's worth like going through that yeah so but uh, but then like the brawling i think the only difference is because there still has those same types of random fights on the street but the difference is I'm actually actively beating those guys up. And maybe that's like I mean, yeah, it's totally enough different to way power of... my like not being annoyed with it thing. Because like, look, look how fast I killed them, you know. Well, an RPG can have fun combat. I mean, we played this Indivisible. Is... Right. And but... it was hard to dodge, but we always enjoyed that combat. So it just depends on the combat. Even if it's random, like it could still find a way to be fun but i think the combat is fun when it's i'm saying it could find a way to be fun forever right for a very long time and now at this point for you it's getting repetitive but i think it's just isn't dragon quest i think because it's so inspired by dragon quest it's dragon quest type combat of just very generic turn-based i i don't remember it getting too repetitive for me in dragon quest i think my big problem with dragon quest was the this the difficulty spike it took right and i this always game enjoyed apparently has one of those as well as an some people think it's as an homage to dragon quest there's apparently one boss that I'm kind of dreading. There's apparently one boss fight somewhere where the difficulty spike is just through the roof and then it goes back down. Interesting. And people are saying like that could be because it's so heavily inspired by Dragon Quest they yeah. put that in there. Which, if I have to go grind in the dungeons, ugh, I don't know. We'll see. This all makes it sound like I don't like this game. I love this game. It's okay to be critical of something and still like the game. Just True. saying. But that's pretty much all I've been playing. So before we get into the shout outs for the games we played this year, I want to talk about some games we want to play next year. For single player. For single player stuff. We're still in solo time. What are you looking forward to? What's coming out next year that's kind of tickling your jimmies? That's... I hate that. Yeah, sorry. Um, It's okay. Forgive you. Any game I'm looking forward to, I usually put on my calendar. So I just went down my calendar for next year and I got... Most stuff like on the early half of the year, because obviously not everything's been announced, of course. But I'm looking forward to Atelier Ryza 2, which is the sequel to the other Atelier Ryza game. And the first sequel to an Atelier game that has like the same protagonist. So that's interesting. But hmm. I, I really liked the first one. It's just a cozy, cute game. So you're kind of new to this franchise. It's not like you've been playing Atelier games for a long time. A right. couple years is not a long time. You know. Listen, you know, that's perspective, man. If you're 16 couple years is a long time. Right. But if, I'm like, still young. But I'm saying you haven't been playing for 10 years. No, And like not now for you're 10. excited for the More next for one two. the way you are with like, I don't know, Final Fantasy or Persona or something. Yeah. I mean, I am excited for this game for sure. Right. No, I just, just think it's cool that you have a new series, a relatively yeah, that's true. new to you series to look forward to the sequel of. I, I don't think they're like super amazing. And I don't know if I'll get everyone coming out, but I, I, I do see. like this one so far. So I'm also looking forward to East Monstrum. Which is also a series I'm I'm fairly new to, the East Games. That's cool. I, um, I'm like jealous. <laughs> I love the East Games. I think you would ask me, are you going to play every East game? And I was like, I don't know. But now I think I actually am because I ended up buying. There's a great site. If you Google like East Games, what order should I play? There's a whole a, like a very nicely formatted fan site to these games. that's like loves them so much, clearly, and has the, like recommended order of which ones to play in the story way. So I, I played you know, East Origins this year, and it was really a really great game. So I'm, I'm excited for East Monstrum. That's that's the newest one, but I'm still playing the old ones as, you know, you know, it's basically not in between other games I play. Right. Um, 
Also looking forward to Persona 5 Strikers. Yep. That's on my list. That's the first one so far that's on my list as well. And Craig thought it was co-op. It's not. Dude, it's a Musou game. How is it not? I guess we'll find out. But I'm mean, just like, I thought, I legitimately thought this was going to be an awesome co-op game. We've been playing Hyrule Warriors and mm -hmm. I've been thinking, oh, if only this was Persona. And now it can't be Persona. <laughs> I love Hyrule Warriors. Oh, um, there's nothing wrong with that. I just was, you know. I'm excited for, for, for to, to play it either way, though. I think yeah. it'll be fun. Um, and then also, lastly, the new Story of Seasons game, of course, is out next year, All of Town, and it looks interesting. They're doing the 3D thing, um, like all 3D models instead of having the character portraits, which some people are disappointed at. I'm kind of disappointed about it, too. Frankly. It sort of looked like, because we were just talking about this the other night, it sort of looks like Harvest Moon. Like, like it going looks cheap. to the Natsume Harvest Moon. Yeah, right? like it looks like it's going to that, you know, we've talked about this at length, yeah. but... But I, I still have more hope for it than I do for Harvest Moon. I'm certainly not going to pick Fair. up the new Harvest Moon. Um, but I am going to pick up the new Story of Seasons just because I'm pretty faithful at this point. So those are the games I'm looking forward to right now. Nice. What about you? Well, for me, there's that new Pokemon Snap that we know nothing about. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, and yeah, I would right. love for that to come out this year or next year, I guess. I totally This year forgot. by the time you're hearing this. Yes. That's uh, true. Welcome to 2021, everyone. This is... <laughs> We're recording this uh, like late December ish, so yeah, Pokemon Snap's interesting because I feel like they did that one trailer, and I totally forgot about it. And they should bring it up again. Cause, but here's like, the thing: the problem with this Corona time, I don't know how long ago that was. It might not have been that long ago, all things considered. It, it is feels funny. like years ago, and it feels like people forgot yeah. about it. Why are we all having problems with time? I mean, I understand it's because we're this corona situation but it's interesting like what 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 is the actual reason for it like we it's not just that. Because it's like stuff everyone. isn't happening so you're doing the same thing right most people are doing the same thing every single usually day usually we have like benchmark events yeah, right, right right and now we have no benchmark events it's just like the same day in and day out which right. is like really sad to think about and that's i think that's another reason is we were we're stopping thinking like remembering things <laughs> right you don't have to think about the time because you know you'll be here because you also Doesn't don't want to you also don't want to think about the time to survive you know right. like to like psychologically get through it you're trying not to think so much about what's going on so anyway that's uh sad <laughs> but that was this year that's for sure speaking of survive digimon survive i think it's kind of a tactics game too i don't mm. totally remember it got pushed out of this year and now it's pushed into next year and i've the last one cyber sleuth i really liked until about the end where i realized this is just a knockoff persona <laughs> yeah i played like i think i did try that because i had I a tried blast. like an hour and i was like mm, no yeah i had a, a real good time with it and then i just hit a wall i guess i think it doesn't help that i'm not that into digimon right and i'm i, like I was digimon. just like i don't know what any of these things are telling me that it's, i think my problem was when you're like f making evolving them i was like i don't know what these names mean so i had no um frame of reference for if that was a good one or a bad one. but you don't want to explore that doesn't interest you because that's uh, i don't know the digimon that well. i don't know you're right i guess it's like like persona having all those different personas i really liked exploring that for some reason i just wasn't enticed by digimon what i don't know you? why it didn't have the same style as Persona. Maybe that's why. Persona helps because there's so much style and like flavor oh, yeah. and music. And I love the Persona games. I just don't want to replay them. You know what I mean? Right. That's why I'm excited for Persona 5 Strikers. <laughs> right. You get the style without having to do like a annoying 125 uh, hour. Man, yeah. that end of Persona 5 was such a ball buster, dude. I don't even want to think about it. Right. We talk about this quite a bit, actually, because that's how much it impacted us. Such a great game that i actually love and i think about it in positive light yet i dread the concept of ever going back and playing it i think that's sort of like movies that you watch and you're like that was a good movie i will never watch it again mm -hmm. like the graveyard of fireworks oh yeah what well, a little I'm different comparing that movie <laughs> a little to different personified. i know it is different but just that same concept of i experienced that thing i don't need to experience it again for reasons that are valid yeah and that's <laughs> that's that vampire the masquerade 2 oh uh, yeah or bloodline i forget the total name anyways it's the next vampire game more vamps and the first one was really cool stray that game about a cat oh yeah i don't know anything about it really other than you're a cat in yeah a that's all you need world, to know so. there was robots with smiley faces and a cat and it's like yeah i want to play this game of course i do and then three that are real re right up my alley just total craig games riders republic Destruction All-Stars, and Roller Champions. I don't know what any of those are. You don't have to. Fair enough. <laughs> Rider Republic is um, the guys that did Steep. Okay. Now it's you mountain bikes, and okay. you're still skiing on the dirt. 
Dude, and did you try like that there's game? ATVs or something. That too. mountain bike game where you go down and you die a lot. What's Descenders? it called? Oh, Lonely Lonely Mountain. I think so. Yeah. You played that? I watched a streamer play, it and I actually thought it was kind of funny. Oh, it's a very good game. Do you? Yeah, it looks kind of what? You want to play some? <laughs> no. Oh, I just uh, enjoyed I love watching the streamer play it. So that is know. one of the most mountain bike. That's a great translation of mountain biking to video games. Like, no, it's not like, like you a die simulator. That often? No, but you <laughs> you have to dial in your route. Like you have to go slowly uh-huh, right. until you get it good, and then you can work on getting your your you know. Do you have real experience with mountain biking like that? I was super into mountain biking for a while, and mm. I still am, but I don't live near any mountains. I only like downhill. Okay, like I don't want to pedal. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's all you do in that game too. Right, so. it's a, downhill mountain biking is awesome. There's this game on PS2 downhill domination i played so much of that thing so so sorry what were the other two games uh destruction all stars which is kind of looks like a it looks like a destruction derby but you can get out of your car when it gets destroyed i don't know it was supposed to be a playstation 5 launch title i don't know if it's going to be worth like 70 or whatever new games cost but we'll see i'm excited to see what that is because i like destruction derbies and i like fake sports you know what i mean like it has that like Mm -hmm. wrapper of like future sport and also another future sport, fake sport, Roller Champions, which is Ubisoft's weird roller derby type. Oh, I remember that trailer yeah. now. I played the beta when it first launched, and I was not good at it at all. So I don't know how much of this I'm going to play if it's going to be the same. Like, it didn't feel like I got any better. Yeah. And I played for like maybe 10 hours. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we'll see on that one. But I am excited to see what it is. And that is all the games we're excited about in 2021. Can't so wait. I think we should now talk about the games we are still excited about from 2020. Let's do it. Developed by Saves Together, this is our Game of the Year style that we call the Shoutouts. And we're going to go down a list of categories. We talked about it in private. We talked about it offline and we came up with winners for we each of these categories. We talked about it in private. We talked about it in public. And we're just going to kind of talk about cool stuff and things we liked mostly. Sometimes things we didn't like, probably. But it's supposed to be more of a celebration and less of a competition, you know? Celebration of gaming in 2020. A year in which we needed gaming. Gaming was important. It was. And I... Played them games. Played games. (laughs) Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. That's been our (laughs) shout-outs. All (laughs) games gets the shout-out. Actually... (laughs) <laughs> that's kind of a good shout uh, out to video games this shout year out to games in general for just being there for us all yeah i feel like they really did have like if there's you know how they do that time people person of the year right yeah isn't video it games probably should have won because think about you had politicians using video games to like get a message across you had massive numbers selling animal crossing and switches and 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 actors of all fame building computers shirtless you know what, what I mean? henry cavill Oh, Henry Remember Cavill. How, like, gaming... Guess what else Henry Cavill posts on Instagram? That Him... he reads Stormlight Archive. That's funny. I what know. a bay. <laughs> <laughs> but like, legitimately, yeah. I feel like this was gaming's biggest year. Maybe not money-wise, who knows. It's but... probably more it was gaming's biggest year, but we're yes, we're still growing, that's for sure. Right. And uh, you're right. It, it, it helped us get through some, some rough times. Media in general, but gaming, you know, because I also read a lot of books, but right. gaming's been been good. And then the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, you know? Yeah, what a... The consoles that people still can't get their hands on, I guess. What a both unfortunate and great year to launch, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a little sad because, you know, it's expensive. And also the PS5 has become so widely unavailable. It's just a bunch of scalpers. I don't even know how we got one in the first place. It shocks me to this day. I'm good at my job. Yeah, here he's good at refreshing Amazon (laughs) over and over again. Congrats. I showed you a video the other day of shoe scalpers leaving a shoe store, mm-hmm. but the shoe store makes them wear the sneakers out of the store, so they're walking funny to not crease them and not get dirt on them. Is there some way we can do this with video games? Yeah, they could. They could plug. They could have to beat like a whole game. Oh yeah, you have to beat store. Mario or something. Whatever's you on the disc. You have to beat disc. the first three levels of. You got to beat Astrobot. Of Astrobot. <laughs> right yeah. here, right now, to leave with this thing. Oh my gosh! Speaking of Astrobot, have you seen the videos of people doing the? I, I know you still haven't beaten Astrobot, but there's time trials and there's one with the monkey, 
and you have to move the controller back and forth to climb the wall. Did you see me playing this? Mm, sounds familiar. And people doing speed runs of it is so funny. I need What's to show technique? you later. What's the technique? They're just like, like I can't eat. Well, I can't. This is not visual. But they're moving the controller back and forth in their hands, just like shaking it so fast. <laughs> it's just, it's very funny. Because that's what you have to do to climb the wall. And that's like watching the video without seeing them do it. You're like, how the hell? But yeah. then some people were posting videos of their like, technique it's very it's very funny so i look that up i've been seeing some of the time trial stuff that's really cool it's yeah a lot of people Mirror's have been getting edge. super into it i don't know why i mean it's actually fun i love time trials and games like that it's, if they're short enough yes they have to be short yeah. and they have to be different from the level like they have to be special and sackboy has those two sackboy has some which cool is one. really fun um D- mirror's edge back in 2008 had leaderboard time trial stuff and you could see the ghosts oh yeah that's cool. and I would just watch them and be like, oh my God. Like they would just jump up a wall. Like, how did they grab that? You know? I would I would actually use the ghosts in um, Mario Kart. The new, the, I think the one, was it? I don't Eight? know if it was Switch. It, yeah. The I think one it was, on Wii U probably. The one on Wii U I used. played too much of the Switch one. Yeah. I used, I played that game a lot and I started getting really good and I wanted to know all the tricks. So I would watch the ghost trials and find their shortcuts and then try to like uh, imitate them. <laughs> and it would work Smart. out pretty yeah. well. So let's get we into start? It. Let's get into the shout outs. First one. Last year, we had Chicken Noise of the Year, and this year we have The Partner. Oh, you have to put it in here. We did do that last year. We should do Okay, I'll again. try to get it. It shouldn't be I ended up getting the Chicken Noise. It wasn't that hard. Yeah. This year is the Owl Noise of the Year, and that award goes to... Terraria. Sorry, yeah. did I uh, no, kill still? No, um, that, was the, that was what I wanted. I wanted I, I laid it up, and you dunked it in. I don't know how basketball okay. works yeah that's all right no one plays basketball um terraria owl noise of the year this was also a new feature in the update which is cool like yeah. they didn't have the owls before so we didn't actually end up doing an episode on terraria Wait, we did it? journey's end no i forgot so i guess there's a little asterisk on this one wait a second <laughs> why didn't we do that because we played a lot of it this right year. we just didn't get around to it yeah well because we could I, always here's do why i'd say also. yes there's a lot of difference but we were going to say the same things Right, we did. Uh, yeah, right. And we already I got, have done an episode on Terraria. Yeah. It was one of our first episodes. Um, but this year, the Journey's End final massive update came out, and we went back and we started over from scratch. Yes. However, we did it on hard mode. Yes. Which, towards the end, we literally got to like the priests or whatever before the moon night. Uh, they're just, it's just too hard. We're, we don't have, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, it, I think, right, yeah, we didn't get, so we didn't get we to didn't, the Moon Lord, which I think we did last time. We beat, oh yeah, we it beat on, it the first time. It was on normal mode last time. Yeah, and then we yeah. played hard mode, expert, whatever. We did everything hard, and uh, towards the end, I sort of regretted that. Right, we didn't even really, we did some of the new bosses, like there was the, um, we tried them. I don't think we actually did them, like the queen jellyfish. Oh yeah. Uh, not jellyfish, oh my, slime the queen, 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 the slime, slime queen. queen. We did that, didn't we, did we beat her? I think so. That sounds familiar. It's also been a while since we played. It has. But we also tried the the Light Hope Fairy Queen. I don't know her name. Listen, there's a lot of new things, but also a lot of like a lot of the same things. And it's still a really fun game. Like, oh, yeah. No, us saying it's kind of the same doesn't mean don't play it. You should definitely play Terraria. But they added owls. But and they added owls and they sound so <laughs> real. They sound so good, too. They're like, it's such a good, cozy noise. It's just like playing at night in the game and you hear... You're like, oh, an owl. I don't know. It was but such it, a nice noise. It, <laughs> at least in my headphones, it would sound like it was in the room. It did. Like, it, it didn't sounded sound like really it was part real. of the game. There was something different about the audio quality or something. I, no, you're right. It does sound weird. Like, it would like kind of freak me out, but I kind of liked it too. Yeah, it was nice. So it was a good addition. Best best update to Terraria of the year. Yeah, owl noise. The owl. The owl noise, man. Yeah, Great. forget those new bosses. You don't need that. Just, just go listen to the owls. Just just make a base and sit there. By the fake fire, and I made an armor room. That was fun. I enjoyed that. Dude, the fireworks launched by the volcanoes launched by stepping on things. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. that was I cool. like Terraria a lot. They dude. added those traps and stuff. Remember, we tried to do like the. We made a sick lava trap. Yeah, we did. Dude, I like Terraria. It's a good game. Give it a shot if you haven't yet. It will run on your shitty computer. It runs on mine. So that I, I'm a good I'm a good benchmark for that. My computer isn't shitty, but it's not like yes, a seat. Pussy. It's not a pussy. A what? <laughs> Why aren't you laughing? That's funny. Wait, I don't get it. PC, pussy? <laughs> I meant to say PC, and I oh. said pussy. Well, it's sort of funny. Thanks. Thanks <laughs> for your uh, support. Okay, next is 
biggest bop, which we also did last year, which I think was what? Last year? Yeah. It was Tetris Effect. Tex- uh, we're oh, all yeah. connected. It's great. Biggest game. bop is our like favorite song from games. Mm-hmm. And have we ever talked about, do we pick, are we allowed to pick like we're allowed Tony to do Hawk's, we want, man. Tony, to- Tony Hawk's soundtrack is very, very good. Mm-hmm. So does, does real licensed music win? Fuser um, no. is incredible. Does real licensed no. music win? No. This isn't a music podcast. This is a video game podcast. I want to talk about music that was constructed for these games. And we we're talking this year about, um, what's the name of the song? I think it's just River City. We're the... We're the River City Girls. I think it's, it's from just River, 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 City, River City, City Girls. Girls. River City Girls from River City Girls. So it's called River City Girls. It's called We're the River City Girls intro featuring Christina V and Nate Wants to Battle. Okay. Uh, great song. That whole soundtrack for River City Girls is really great. Yeah, that whole game's good. This is kind of the one we picked. And then a little shout out to 5 p.m. and Animal Crossing New Horizons. Oh, yeah, that bass line. With the horns. It slaps. And, of course, uh, Final Fantasy VII's remake soundtrack is, is just amazing. Pretty much across the board, just like, just like River City Girls. Final Fantasy VII is incredible. Yeah, it's so good. It's but specific so, so good. shout outs for me anyways to the expressway and That's the, the one like when you're underneath the like um you're in the tunnels, right? Yeah, you're in the tunnels and there's like those giant construction hands. Yeah, that was a great song. And then the the combat song it kind of turns into when you're fighting is also good. So good. And the ho- the honeybee, I was going to say the holiday inn song. <laughs> but no, not pitbull. Honeybee inn that whole entire segment is just yeah great game um great soundtrack can't wait to start this is a category for co-op games we are excited about that maybe already are out we just haven't been able to get to them yet and on this list i put deep rock galactic which you didn't when when we talked about it later you're like i don't care about that game i would play it but i'm not like can't wait to start it something about it has been has been drawing me in however I will say that's not the winner. Why are you talking about the winner first? The winner doesn't you have to lead up. You go three, two, one. You don't go one, two, three. Well, I guess no one's going to care about the losers. I care. Sorry, it's not winners and losers. It's not winners and losers. You take that back. Okay. (laughs) I take it back. Uh, And then Haven. Haven's the winner. Oh, whoops. (laughs) And struggling. And three, one, two. We went (laughs) Uh, struggling. Is that one that looks kind of like Heave Ho, but a little slimier, a little grosser. Yeah, it looks gross. But I'm excited to try that because of how much I liked Heave Ho. But also, you only play as one blob, right? You're not playing as two blobs. You each play as one arm instead, which is interesting. Yeah. So different. So definitely have a different idea. Um, But the one we're giving the shout out to is Haven. Yeah, Haven. And it's on Game Pass. So if you haven't played it and you want to play it before us, do it. It's on there right now. We want to play it. We just have so many games we're playing right now where it's next on the list for sure. Right, it's about like you've probably heard us talk about it already, but it's about yeah, like yeah. I think we did it lovers. as an indie game co-op, uh, a, like feature as a, a while ago, like as a treasure, as a buried treasure. Yeah, yeah. it's um, it's about lovers. It's about lovers hanging out and fighting better because they're in love. Interesting. On like a fantasy planet, so I'm excited. I'm, to see I what have it's high like. hopes for the co-op gameplay, like like uh, our attacks if we time them right together, stuff like that. Yeah, you know. It'll be interesting to see what that's what that's like. We're definitely going to give it a shot. And you'll, you'll, you'll hear about it from us in 2021. Okay, and then next is... Can't believe it took us so long to play. This is a good one. I think last year it was t- uh, Portal 2. Mm-hmm. And this year, it's another similarly old and classic co-op game, Minecraft. Right. Like, yeah, we just... I think because Terraria ended up being kind of our Minecraft. Because it is a good game to play with someone... When you like also don't really know them. I don't know. A lot of people play Minecraft. Yeah. And now the reason I think it took us so long is I've we talked about it on the episode. Oh, you platinum did, right? <laughs> I had played so much Minecraft before. No, me too. Me too. Yeah. That, it makes sense. Like when I was I played this game when it first came out, right. I was a kid, like a teen. Um I was playing with like just randos all the time and so much. And now it so it was like, why do we need to play it again? But it was it's fun. Like Minecraft's a good game to get into if you haven't 
if you haven't tried it, obviously, but if you haven't played it for a while, going back to it can be fun. Yeah, especially during this when we had a ton of downtime. Oh, yeah. it's And it gets addicting. It really does. Like, it wears off after a while, which is good. At least for us, it did. I don't know about everybody else, but it has that it has that addict period, the honeymoon period when mm-hmm. we're like, I'm going to go dig it. I'm going to dig. I'm going to find so many diamonds. The honeymoon addiction. Yeah, that that like it's where real. you're just like, that's all I want to do. Yeah, like Stardew, obviously same thing. But yeah, Minecraft, um, great game. Obviously still a great game. Still a good game. I mean, it's still uh, people like LOL at it all the time because it's so overplayed, but uh, it's worth playing. So there's a reason people are still playing it. Right. I, I, I don't like mess with all the newer stuff they put in there, like all the redstone and redstone is not new. Redstone has been in it since. OK, probably day I one. meant. OK, what I actually <laughs> but I know what, what you I mean, act- like all the advanced <laughs> Minecraft. Yes. What I actually meant more was like the Ender Dragon. That That's new fun too. That to stuff me. Is fun too. That, that is new to me, though. Mm-hmm. As someone who played it when it first came out, like before Hunger, seriously, I played so much before there was like a lot of the stuff in there and it was just as fun. Right. And so when I play it now, I'm like, I don't need to do that other stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, Minecraft is a very good game. I'm excited to see it in the future, but it's not a Craig. It's, hmm, I don't it's know. It's not a Craig game? Like, I that's like it. Fair. It's good, but it's, it's not, not good one that starting, I like that's really, for sure. I'm obsessed with it. Anymore. Yeah. But it is pretty impressive. It took us three whole years to finally do it. True. It's that is true. A major co op experience thing. I think it would even be good for people who don't play a lot of games. Like, yeah, for sure. This is a Minecraft is one of those games for sure. It's like your fir- it's like baby's first, not baby. That's You're rude. a baby. <laughs> it's like someone's first really kind of intense game. It's definitely intense you know when those I mean? creepers like, sneak up on you, bro. Yeah, you and your creeper <laughs> fear is wild. <laughs> I don't have fears of creepers. Yes. I just don't like when things stick up on me, okay? I don't care what it is. It could be two blocks wide. It could be it could be visually stunning looking thing. I just hate being chased, all right? Right. And creepers chase you. I will never play a game in which I'm chased. Most surprising surprise. And this is a game that caught us off guard a little bit. We weren't expecting it to be good or for, a, for it to hook us. You yeah, know? yeah. And really, there's only one, and you you can probably guess it if you've listened to our other episodes. If you're a faithful fan, if you're a faithful fan, guess right now. Ready, go. Okay. What did you say? If you said indivisible, you're you were right. right. Congrats, you win a free trip to the Saves Together Clubhouse, where we have pretzel coated chicken nuggets and apple pie. <laughs> okay, indivisible was a really fun game and i was was not expecting that right we i just think I, we weren't expecting it in a co-op way it's not like we weren't expecting it to be a fun game it was I more wasn't like expecting it to be a fun game really either <laughs> i just kind of put it on because i had heard like it's all right it's cool i think i heard someone say like it's pretty good and so i put it on not knowing anything not knowing what it is right and almost immediately we jumped in figured out it was co-op and that's one of also the boons of game pass is you can just download something without any like loss yeah. And try it and maybe you'll actually really dig it and you wouldn't have even bought it before cuz you had no idea, you know? Exactly. So that's what that's what's cool. You got to try this, which is a game that we think you got to try that maybe you haven't thought about, maybe you don't even know about, one of the lesser known co-op games. Right. And this year it's Part-Time UFO, which maybe you might know about cuz they talked about it recently in the Nintendo Direct. But I feel like that's one of those ones that gets forgotten about because oh, yeah. they're also talking about Zelda and Mario and you know. And we have not done an episode on this, but we are going to because we've right. we've beaten the game. Um, but it's so just just know it's a little spoiler. We loved it. It's really fun. You definitely got to try. I do think it's also good for someone who's kind of newer to games or less into games. It's very cute and accessible and and interesting. It's a it's an interesting little puzzle game for two people. Yeah, it's not really very it. hardcore, but it is. But it is challenging. It like is it challenging. is challenging. Yeah. It's great. It's simplistic. It's easy to get into, and it's it's adorable. I love the the little graphics. I mean, it's by um, Hal Laboratories. I think it's what it's called. People that do mm-hmm. Kirby, yeah. but you know, which I didn't really realize. I had actually played this on mobile before when it was just a mobile game, and I was like, I mean, it's fine, I guess. I don't really see the appeal. Right. And then when it came out on Switch, and you wanted to play it, I was like, but I already didn't really like it. And then we played it. It was great. It had a fun time. Yeah, I think it's really fun co-op. You know, you can play it by yourself, but I do think the co-op adds something special. Yeah, so. it does. The other, the runner-up for this was going to be Indivisible before we realized that should probably be the most surprising surprise. 
But now, now you can give it. That one's also on Game Pass, so yep. you should give that a shot as well if you're interested. Wait, part-time UFO is not. No, on Indivisible Game Pass. is. Yeah, you right. just mentioned Indivisible. That's why I'm saying that one's on Game Pass. Right, right. You can actually go try that one. Yeah. Relatively easily. Sickest trick. This is a category for basically just me, uh, and it's just where I want to talk about cool action sports video games that I love. And this year, we had so many, and it was awesome. We had a huge return. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2. I think that's the full title. Uh, that's the winner, but also Skater XL and Session both came out in some way. They've already been out, but now they're out on more stuff. I they're don't know. Out, it's more convoluted. Out, out. They're more out. But uh, like Skater XL, my disc copy finally arrived, you know. But the winner is Tony Hawk's. If you have any history of liking that game, go back to this. It was so refreshing and so nice to be obsessed with a Tony Hawk's game again. And you can be a skeleton man. You can be a skeleton man. That's um, all I care about. The music, the soundtrack that they they kept most of, if not all of the original. There was a point in time where they weren't going to have the, all of it, but I think they ended up getting every song from the two games. And then they added songs that that fit the vibe, and they have that same, like, they get stuck in your head, like, brain worm or whatever they call that. They did a really, really good job with this game. It's like a love letter to it, as well as adding a couple new challenges and things, and I just, oh, gosh, it was good. I kind of want to play it again. I might do, do a couple runs later. Do it. Next category is Fishing Mechanic of the Year which is a category for me, but I do see that you've added some of your own to this list. Which <laughs> so before you say you're winning, making then, it I'll about say mine. you somehow, of course. <laughs> um, so essentially, it's not necessarily about how good the fishing mechanic is. It's more about a game which has fishing, which is many games I play for some reason, that I want to talk about that I haven't talked about yet that I liked. Right. And this year I played Spirit Fairer, which does have a fishing mechanic. Just talk about the fishing mechanic for a second, not that impressive. But the game itself, I really enjoyed. I think it has like um, a really great sort of theme, which is about grief and the idea of like going through grief and letting go. And it's really beautiful. I love the characters. I thought there's like some issues with like uh, pacing, but overall I think it's a, I think it's a really fun game and worth checking out. And I also think it's on Game Pass. It is. And so there you go. <laughs> it's also co-op. We just haven't played it. It is co-op. Yeah, you can be, it's it's more of like um in a, accomplice co-op it's accomplice yeah right it, where but but the cat you can be the cat essentially and she see, that's almost Stella, uh, that almost is a has rank a of itself you can be the cat <laughs> that's true the cat actually can do almost everything stella the protagonist can do so it's actually not that much of an accomplice it just seems like it because you're a cat anyway it it seems really cute so if you haven't checked that out yet and you like these kind of slower paced more of like simulation games like i like then you should you should try did you want to mention your little other So games? I added other ones on here because <laughs> just because I was thinking about it. How how often fishing ends up in games? Like why is that? <laughs> I think cuz in real life it's so boring. So it's like, yo, you know what? We can make fishing fun. Every but every dev says. Ace Angler is a fish hunter game that they turn into a Switch game. Uh, I only played a little bit of it, but I kind of want to play someday with you because it's like a co-op challenge -y. Oh, it's co-op? I, I don't know if I should, maybe I shouldn't call it co-op, but like we can play at the same time. I see. Well, we it's can like still... this real weird yeah. type of game that doesn't, it didn't really catch on here, but it got like banned places because it's kind of gambling. I was going to say, is it like those games in the place where you like catch fish for money? You're and, basically, yeah, right, exactly. In arcades. And like those, there would be like illegal fish hunter dens, like, you know, that they'd get raided. That's funny. So awesome. And so then I bought this because I wanted to play those games but not get raided. Good for you. And then uh, Fantasy Star Online 2 has a fishing mechanic that sucks. I yeah. just wanted to shout it out. Because... Screw that. <laughs> Casino mechanic, though, on point. I figured, so I also, I wanted to be fair. I, I did put games that I thought of into your fishing category, so I want to put one that I thought of for you in my sickest trick category. <laughs> Still about you. <laughs> Go ahead. I want to give you Miles Morales in Sickest Trick oh, because there true. is a tricks button. That's true. And, and you now, do some sick tricks and it is pretty sick. There you go. Tricky. Now we're both in each other's okay, categories. Now and we're it's even. fair and co-op. Now we're even. The next category. Is a new one. Is not because we didn't put one on this list. What? Can't believe I spent so long playing. Oh, this is a game. That's not on the net. Oh, I see. You didn't put it on the list. <laughs> this is a game that I think in the past had a negative connotation. But not all. No, did it? I don't know. I don't know. I think last year's was Pokemon Go, which, by the way, I'm still playing. If you can believe it or not. 
But um, this year is Animal Crossing. Yes. And I think now, if there is a negative is, connotation, there shouldn't be. Animal Crossing is a controversial one to put in this category. Because some Why? people are so... I, I don't know if you remember no. uh, May or June, where people just lost their minds over the fact that they didn't want to play Animal Crossing anymore and they thought they were going to die. And they had played for $1,000. Yes. Yeah. Right. Remember, I was mad about it because I was just like... We talked about it on our episode. <laughs> um, we did. And... Yeah, this one maybe isn't a surprise. Maybe we can believe we spent so long. But and we I'm still, still are playing. We still are playing it. Yeah. Just New the other Leaf. day, Red was at your neighborhood, and I was like, yo, hook me up. And I went and got some art, you know? Right. It's not every day. It's not. But it's just like every so often, I, I, I turn it on, and I'm like, yeah, I'm making a snowboy. Right. You know? I'm making a snowboy. I'm making a snowboy. <laughs> uh, I think with New Leaf, I played really hard for about maybe five months, but then I never picked it up again, even on holidays. Whereas this one, we have enough friends that are talking about it or people who are like really hardcore into this game and like inviting us to their island. And that, I don't know, it's just there's a more community around it this time for me. Yeah. And that's inspiring me to go and play. And, and the updates that that's they fun. release are more interesting, at least. I mean, I didn't know about Snowboys. I was rolling up a Snowboy the other day and you were like, this is a classic Animal Crossing thing. I was like, <laughs> it is? Yeah. So yeah. that shows you how much I knew about it, despite I did play a lot of New Leaf, but New Horizons, we're still playing. And I kind of can't believe it, but I kind of can. But I kind of can, yeah. New category for this year. We suck at this. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. A uh, game we sucked at. It's a game we recognize is <laughs> really good and actually was really fun. But we suck. But we sucked so bad we couldn't continue. Yeah, and that is Tetris Effect Connected. A, a previous, is this the first game that has won two years in a row something that has uh, been shouted out well, twice? Well, technically, it's different game because it's, it's a new connected. game, but it's still Tetris Effect, and they did win Biggest Bop. Right? Yes, th I, probably, but either way. Anyway, so we um, we tried this out. It's on Game Pass. I am starting to feel like I should get commissioned for Game Pass because I, I, I constantly mention it. I'm not even a fan of the Xbox, but I am a fan of Xbox Game Pass. That's just how it is. So we tried Tetris Effect Connected because we both love Tetris Effect. We're like, oh my gosh, co-op Tetris. Let's give it a shot. And it's 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 co-op versus a boss. It's like a raid battle. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun game. But we were really bad and we, we died. Bad. <laughs> there are maybe four levels to the whole thing. We beat the first one and we can't beat the second one. We beat easy and we can't beat normal. So we can only play like... 30 minutes of it really yeah and we kind of realized we were relying on the computer so we turned them then because there's a third person you can have three people play uh so we turned on the ai level to like lower but then we were losing we're like oh we're not good at tetris and so yeah. we just stopped playing but it's a great game so hey if you and your partner are like really good at tetris or maybe just good and we're just so bad we're not even average i don't know man i think we're not even average well fair enough we're probably average because if you factor <laughs> in everybody what's it called what's the average when it's combined without the outliers is that the mean oh my god i don't Stats, know dude. math but but yeah i wish that the difficulty was spread out across more levels it's possible there was options to like play the same beginning level over and over again, but it oh, yeah. did feel just from like people just turning on the game and playing what it was without exploring all but the if options. You, if you play the first thing over and over again, you're only getting the three boss types yeah, with their true. special attacks. Like I want to see some more attacks, but we can't progress far enough. Yeah, it, it, it's it's great. Give it's it a, a very shot. good game. I, I actually love that mode. Yeah. I wish that we were better. I wish maybe that we're just bad. They could balance it for two people. Yeah, if there's like a two-player mode, yeah, that'd be so kind of fun. Yeah, so then possibly without the AI guy, I don't know. We could, uh, this game's good, you should try it. It's on Game Pass, like you said. Next Gen Co-op Contender. We decided to make a category for co-op stuff we're playing on the, the Next Gen, which is now the New Gen, which is the current gen. Yeah. Um, because next Gen for next year, you know? When the PS4 launched, I played crap I didn't really want to play, but I just wanted to play something, right? Like, mm -hmm. I played Knack, and I only played it because that was the only thing that was somewhat interesting to me. Whereas this generation launched, the PS5 launched, with a bunch of stuff I want to play. And one of those things actually happened to be a very good co-op title, which we will do an episode on. And that is Sackboy Adventure. Is that what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know the Hold name. On. Let's see. Sackboy A Big Adventure. Sackboy A Big Adventure. They close. took the little big out. There's no little, it's just big. Yeah, so I we're gonna do an episode on it next year. We are still playing through it. It's quite a long game. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually us, surprisingly long for us. You know, 
Well, I mean, we played Divinity. That's a long game. I guess, yeah. I thought it was going to be kind of just like there's it's but that's a good thing it's substantial so like you know it's not it's not just a nothing game and i feel like no one's talking really about it and it's worth talking about so that's because nobody boy nobody got a hold of a place nobody got a playstation (laughs) yeah it's true it's true you can't play it unless you have a playstation 5 look out for that episode coming probably early next year yeah i would assume because we're probably close-ish to done we literally have like three games at least in the queue it's crazy yeah which is, but it's awesome. No, it's a good thing. It's yeah. Part of the reason why when people say there's no co op games, I just get a little upset. There's so many co op games. Next, we're going to go into our S ranks. And these are our personal uh, solo games. It's not, we just like to have one like this is, you know, this yeah. is the one that I liked the best from the year. Right. So, um, just to give some shout outs to games that aren't my favorite of the year, but that I really liked, I played Bug, Bug Snacks. I think that's a great game. Really cute and short and fun and weird and worth a shot craig hasn't played it yet so i know i'm excited hey actually i have a question is the ending song game passed by the way (laughs) it's not it is bug snacks yes the playstation 5 exclusive oh shit i meant to say that it's on playstation plus (laughs) (laughs) um which is probably not by the time you're listening to this because it will be january oh wait But but you can still download it right you had it if you had it but if you didn't have playstation plus and you tell them to go get it right now okay fine it's too late it was in december (laughs) if you had it you had it yeah uh i have a question though about the ending without saying is the ending like kind of messed up i mean maybe it is all right because i heard something i was like wait what it's pretty messed up okay all right um i don't want to know i'm excited i'm i'm excited to get to that one yeah that's a great it's real it's just that's such a refreshing little game East Origin, I, I'm playing the East games, like I said, so that was one that really, just a great, a great game. Um, that's an old game, too, but the boss battles are so fun. I just really, it's a really great action game if you're looking for something new and different for action games. Uh, Crosscode, I played on the Xbox, I think it came to Game Pass this year. Mm-hmm. So fun. Um, just like a weird little RPG that I really liked. It had like crazy puzzles with yeah. like bouncing oh, yeah. discs. Yes, and at sometimes it was so frustrating, but like it was just doable enough that i got through it without looking it up i think i looked up like one all right that's pretty good for me I, I'm, I'm liable to cheat um ori in the blind forest and ori in the will of wisps i played both this year so good i love those games um, they're just great sound- soundtracks like beautiful visuals amazing gameplay they're just so fun i i beat them in like a couple days just because i was so into them i i kind of consumed them very quickly okay but finally well, game pass they both are in game pass <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, and then the last two, this came close. I guess last three. So Disco Elysium, I played like first thing in 2020 and I really, really loved that game. And they just announced they're going to do a console port next year with like an enhanced edition with some extra quests. So if you have not played Disco Elysium, you know, wait for that. It's, it's an amazing game. I'm excited to get to that one. I'm going to get that uh, like physical. The writing is just superb. I it's so dark and weird. I like weird things, obviously. I keep saying games I like are weird. You know, weird in, in a good way. Just unique. Unique. It doesn't have to, like, yes, weird. different. Yeah. I like I different I like the things. word weird to mean just there's something. There's something. There's something to this. Something naughty about it. Well. There's something naughty about Disco Elysium. Um, it's great. It's a great game. Uh, and then Final Fantasy VII Remake. I got a, I got a shout out, obviously. that's mm-hmm. That was an amazing game. And then finally, I think my my game of the year is probably my S rank rank. is probably 13 Sentinels, which is Aegis Rim. Oh, yeah. Forgot the last part. Yeah, I don't need the subtitle part of it. (laughs) You'll you'll find it if you Google 13 Sentinels. But I uh, this one definitely came out of nowhere for me. I don't even know about it. And then Craig had already bought it like months ago. You were like, I bought it. I was like, well, that's weird because. Because I, I bought, bought it, it <laughs> six months ago, so I was don't like, worry about it. <laughs> oh, okay. And then it like showed up that day or something. It was amazing. Um, it's an amazing game. If you really, if you like, you know, sci-fi fantasy kind of thing. If you, it's it's like visual novel combined with combat, and the combat's really fun. Kind of tower defensey. Yeah, and it's it's really great. Um, I just I really liked the game. It's, and it's very a game very unique. That's for I, sure. I haven't beaten it. I'm excited to get to it. Yeah. I have played a lot of it, though. It's all about story. It's a game that can... It's a... Sorry. It's a story that can only be told as a game, I think. Or yeah. is most effectively told and as we a talked, game. And we talked a little bit about that the day I Did talked we, okay. about beating this game. But right. yeah, I, I think that's why I like it so much is it's 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 an accomplishment as far as storytelling goes. And that's that's so neat. 
and it makes me really happy. So check out all those games if you like the kind of games I play because they're all worth trying. I have a question. If this sounds like an attack, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. All right. It's a great preface to what? whatever this is going to be. Think about what the amount of times. What is your problem? <laughs> <laughs> think about the amount of times you say, it's on Game Pass. I played it. I loved it. I got to try it on Game Pass. But uh-huh. you also always say, I don't like Xbox. I, I'm not an Xbox person. Yeah. What would it take for you to, to what would it recognize? Take and for- I'm, I mean this actually seriously. I'm, I'm interested in the concept of like you. Again, I don't. This is going to sound mean. I don't want it to. You keep being like, I don't like Xbox, but I love Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass. Uh huh. So when do you admit to yourself that you actually like Xbox? I can like a service without like thinking that the system has all the games for me because it doesn't. But the games you're playing on Game Pass are only available currently. Okay, but not on 13 Sentinels, Final Fantasy I'm not VII ta- Remake. I'm talking about all just the amount of time. You can like multiple systems also. I do. You can be like me that says, I don't really care. You just always add, I don't like Xbox. I'm not an Xbox person. Well, you know. But I think you are. I think you're on It just Xbox. feels wrong. Like the if Xbox I, army. If I was, had an idea. No, it just feels wrong. You know how things <laughs> feel wrong to you? Saying I'm an Xbox person just feels bad in my soul. Fine, but just. Um, I like Game Pass. But I probably wouldn't be playing Game Pass like if. I, if you didn't buy the Xbox, because I wouldn't have an Xbox. But, okay, so then what happens when or if uh, Game Pass comes to Switch? You remember how there are all, all those rumors that Game Pass will be a service you can play on Switch, maybe through the cloud with X streaming, whatever they call their thing, their, their streaming service that they have now, like kind of like Stadia, right? Would you, I guess then you're just, you're, you're a Game Pass fan? You're not an Xbox fan? Yeah, I already said that. I'm a Game Pass fan. Interesting. I'm a fan of the idea of Game Pass. It's not necessarily because it's on Xbox. It's just Xbox is the only one doing something so great. So good for them. Okay, and then my S ranks. Uh, just games I want to shout out from the year. Fuser. I think I talked. I must have talked about it already. Incredible from Harmonix. Love that game. I need to play more of it. Plain Boys Throttle Up. Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> now, I haven't played it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Have not played <laughs> one minute it doesn't of this run. game. I played a minute. Oh, just but one I, staggering, Within that minute. minute, I played about 10 seconds because <laughs> okay. the frame rate was so bad on my computer. <laughs> oh, my God. So I'm waiting for it to come to Xbox, so maybe it shouldn't be on this list, but I am so excited. That's more like can't wait to start for yourself. That's true. That's fair. Fall Guys. Yeah, Gotta give Fall Guys a Fall shout guys. out. That was a great experience this year. Kind of fell off for, I think, a lot of people. Um, slime Climb's terrible. <laughs> yeah. And it's we're, a, already, fun game, we're already starting season three soon, which feels weird. Like, I didn't realize season two had happened. I don't like games that have seasons. Me I don't either. Think. I don't get that at Unless all. Unless the season <laughs> is going to be like half a year to a year. But I understand that's probably too slow. Like, the people who are your hardcore fans I mean, will, technically will a bored. season's only about three months. Has it been... Has it been... Three seasons worth of fall. I don't know. I don't Probably. Know. Anyways, actually. I feel like now I feel overwhelmed. Like, oops, I missed. I missed some stuff. You know what I mean? It's all right. Don't feel overwhelmed because it also doesn't matter. Ghost of Tsushima. Great game. In fact, I think that after you later in life, you should go back and you should check this out. In my life? Later in my life? Like, I was going to say like after I'm you finish Assassin's Creed, okay. play this. But then it's like playing the no. same game, so yeah, don't. Yeah, no way. But I think you should play it sometime, because if you I, like Assassin's Creed, I think this is a better... Maybe not. Oh, the combat's I plan, better. I plan on it. I plan on it. I, I do plan on trying that. I mean, there's so many games we have I, I want to play. Like, Last Jedi, I also wanted to try. Well, so, Last... Last, last Jedi. La- <laughs> <laughs> Jedi Fallen Order. I combined Last of Us and Jedi Fallen Order. Which are the next two games on my list. Last of Us 2 and Jedi Fallen Order. Games I played this year that I really liked. I think mm-hmm. Jedi's from last year, or even 2018. It might be a 2018 game. I think game. it's 2019, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I played it this year. I really liked that game. Yeah, well, I'm excited to play that one, too. Last of Us 2. Talked about it on the podcast before. Really liked that game. And then I had 13 Sentinels on my list as well, but my shout-out, S-Rank, game of 2020, is Final Fantasy Remake. I never played Final Fantasy VII before and i kind of didn't care i thought final fantasy fans were sort of annoying about it you know true and then i played this and it was just incredible like so i good, dude. am obsessed and i can't believe there's three do we know how many they're doing i don't know okay there's at least one more game coming out you when know a new I, mean? one I like comes can't out. wait i'm i'm like chomping at the bit for some news like when is what it are coming? we gonna do because it's gonna be that situation where 
the Persona game comes out, we both want to play it. We have to get two copies yeah, again. Yeah, we'll get two. Co- we didn't. Did we get two copies of Final Fantasy? We didn't. No, we didn't. Right. We took turns because it wasn't that. It, because you didn't know you were gonna like it. Remember? Well, I knew I was gonna play it though. But it wasn't the same. I'm saying. Anyway, we'll just like, get two damn copies. Two damn copies. It is. Maybe it'll be on Game Pass. It, it won't. won't. Be. <laughs> <laughs> that so brings now, us to our favorite co-op experience of the year. The final shout out. If let's just if, say, if you think people can guess it? <laughs> probably not. Actually, I think this year is the first year where you might not be able to guess what we're gonna pick. Whereas the last two, Monster Hunter and Divinity. Yeah, that's true. We were More gushing obvious. about them every episode. But this one, it, this is this stands. This this game's great. Moving out. Moving out. No Great one's game. talking about it. You <laughs> well, people are sleeping on it. Are they? I think so. It's a. I mean, it's a because it's a small game. You know, it's not right. like a huge co-op experience. But you know, I think it's a really good co-op experience. It was you don't very need a big fun. game. They're just throwing boxes at each other, like carrying couches, spinning, pivoting. Oh, it I, was good. It was I, very I good. I kind of want to go back to that one just just for like one day, just like replay a couple levels. Be like, ah, this is nice. I think this year, you know, was a lot about kind of more simple and smaller co-op experiences like part-time ufo like similarly what do you so what do you mean this year like games that were released games or that games that we played we this played? year because you because like factorio well that doesn't make our shout outs did it i know but but i really like <laughs> it. game that pissed me off the most no, i'm just kidding <laughs> no yeah you're right no, this, is the first, good, this but... year i can't we didn't really have a major right right so I'm saying that the, the, ga- the co-op games that stood out to me, at least, were mm-hmm. m- a little more minimalistic, a little more cute, oh, Animal Crossing, sized. a little more relaxing, you know, while well, moving out was not relaxing. But I just think... But it yeah, was in a way. It was. It was fun. It was it was good. And uh, I think everyone should try it. And yeah. it's on Switch. And it's on everything. It's on everything. Might it's be on, on Game lot. Pass. I don't know if it is, actually. <laughs> it might be. I don't know. But I, yeah, that's... Um, moving out is great. And... It's one that I feel confident suggesting to anyone who wants a co-op game, whereas the other two years, Monster Hunter and Divinity Original Sin 2. Yeah, that's true. I kind of, you have to know the person before you can suggest those Those, ones. Those are definitely a lot harder to suggest. Right. So I'm happy that we now have one that we've decided is our shout out. More casual. Top game this year. And it's, yeah, it's casual. I do want to shout out um, Phasmophobia. I only played it once with a couple friends. I haven't played it. Craig hasn't played it, but I mean, it's a huge co-op game this year. So is Among Us. I have played that. I, I have less of a shout out to give to Among, Among Us. Among Us. It's fine. It's, it's good. It's fine. It's, it's, yeah. It is what it is. But Phasmophobia, I, I think I liked it more than I thought I would. I hate scary games, but I think because you're playing with other people and because you have um, more of an option to sit in the truck and you actually have gameplay in there, you, you're not just like hiding. You are giving advice. You're, you have like resources to help your people inside. That's really cool. So I, I like that game for that reason because it has such a good team mechanic and right. it's it's just it's fun and it's got like those moments of like i'm screaming and someone's getting attacked and we have to help them but they're just like oh i'm fine and i don't know it was good i i think that's a good game if you want to try something with your friends that's on the spooky side because we almost never talk about scary co-op games on our podcast ever i yeah. just don't because i don't like them and but well um, we did talk about this game because this was a buried treasure yes right i i buried treasure it before anyone played it i know <laughs> that was funny like it I, was true though legitimately though we talked about it and i was like what is this that you're talking about and then all of a sudden it was huge place. yeah it, it, like, i am everyone jealous. Was streaming it you know i'm jealous you've gotten to play it yeah, i and mean we just well, don't have the setup because we've only got one real pc here right well it doesn't play on Mac, so i, right. I we just there would be no other way to and, play well it. You, you know we have like a older pc laptop listen i don't even want to let's that pretend and... that thing does not exist yeah because it basically doesn't to me. <laughs> but um if we get another PC in this place someday, soon-ish, maybe, I'm excited to play that. Yeah. I would I, do an episode on it, too, because it does, think... so, it sounds like it's got the co-op stuff we love where, like, crew rolls. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know? And it's still in a pre-release. Like, there, I think, if anything, it needs a lot more content, and I'm sure it's going to get it. It's not, like, officially out yet, so I'm looking forward. I'm sure next year will be um, more of it, so. Lastly, instead of doing a... Uh, co-op buried treasure of the week we're gonna talk about some co-op games in 2021 we're looking forward to kind of like we did in our solo time but for co-op games and there's yeah. a couple that are like a big deal that there's we gotta talk big, about there's some big time ones coming so maybe i think one of yeah. them we don't know is that is it you think it's actually gonna you think it'll actually come out next i don't year? even know what you're talking about wait what you, you think don't, it's actually gonna come out next year talking about Baldur's gate Shh, don't spoil the segment <laughs> oh no all right let's well let's uh, let's go talk about Baldur's gate
yeah, the I mean, the game we're probably most excited for next year is Baldur's Gate 3, which is a sort of, you know, in our mind, spiritual successor to Divinity Original Sin 2, because it's by Larian Studios, and uh, there's a lot of influence there with the gameplay. It's obviously more on the, um, I don't know anything about D&D, but on that side of things. You know right? a lot about D&D. Without, without realizing it, you do. Okay, well, whatever you think is I'm just wrong. Saying, like, well, D&D has so like, I permeated felt- gaming. It has video games, but so I do much find it overwhelming. You, I don't think you need to know anything about D and D to go into this game. I guess we'll find out because we haven't tried sure. the beta. We don't plan on trying the beta. Yeah, we. I was excited to, and then like you kind of talked me out of it, and I agree with you. Where I just want it to be a point, full experience. You yeah, know? what's the point of playing the first act when it's full of bugs and full of stuff that's going to get changed and fixed and whatever? And that's what they want. They were like, "Listen, don't play this if you like want the whole like the finished thing." Yeah. and that's what we want. So we're going to wait. Yeah, and, and so out. that's what I, I was saying. Like, do you think this is actually going to make it next year? It might not. I, don't, I almost don't think it is. But for now, we're going to count it as looking forward to 2021 game, Baldur's Gate 3. We're also looking forward to Balin Wonderland, which I didn't even know was co-op until we confirmed <laughs> that this morning. We're looking forward to this with with like a... LOL. With an, with an LOL. With put an, a lol on it. With a lol, Put a lol on it. Um, call it a game. I think I might... It's one of those games that you're going to like... Like, it's going to be a go vacation, I think, where people are going to look at this and they're like, you guys like that? We don't want to talk to you. It looks weird and interesting. But so. it does kind of look interesting. I don't know. You can you can dress up as a sheep and bounce around. And it might can, be terrible. There's like 80 costumes. It probably sucks. But maybe it doesn't. We'll find out. And there's in the trailers. If you watch the trailers, guys, look, 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 look close. Pause at the screens where it looks like there's little bunny rabbits bouncing around our feet, the characters' feet. Do you think those are like chows? Like, are we going to have a chow garden? I don't know. Dude, if we have a chow garden. <gasps> That'd be sick. <clears throat> um, another game is Back for Blood, which is one that they announced and showed gameplay and a trailer for at the Game Awards this yeah. year, um, which is the Left 4 Dead spiritual successor. Right. So that's very exciting. We both good. played a lot of Left 4 Dead when we were younger. Um, it's a fun game. I mean, Left 4 Dead's a great... I don't even like zombie games and I don't like co-op shooters, but I don't know why Left 4 Dead was special. I think everyone agrees about that. So excited for Back 4 Blood. Yeah. Another one is It Takes Two, which is another gameplay trailer they showed at Game Wars. It looks amazing. The next Joseph Forrest, I think that's his name, right? The guy that did A Way Out, Mm -hmm. the next game from his studio, uh, which is very exciting. And I actually loved A Way Out. I loved A Way Out, yet the setting and stuff didn't interest me right, i still liked so it i still loved it but this, this game looks even more better amazing it's like th- these two more cute like this couple turn into toys and then they have to work through their relationship it, it very much reminds me of sack boy yeah because they kind of look like sack people also. and it seems like you're going to be playing kind of mini game type varied gameplay yeah, right Not it looks like that's games, kind but... of the thing that they're trying to highlight is like there's a million different almost like mini games throughout the the game that you're playing together, like all kinds of different co-op games. So awesome. it seems really exciting. And then finally, uh, we're very excited for Monster Hunter Rise because we were so think, into Monster Hunter World. I think And it's Switch. Yeah, that's which will be interesting. And it seems like it's a it seems like it's a mix between world and the old style. So possibly the perfect the perfect Monster game. <laughs> I'm uh <laughs> we're we're Monster Hunter World players. And I couldn't get into the old ones, so like I don't totally know if I agree when people are like, eh, "World is too easy," or like less. It's not complicated. The, do enough. people say that? Yes, the the, the oh. old heads that really like the old style ones. Well, those people are dumb. Have a couple issues with world, and I'm like, well, we'll see. Yeah, I had no issues. Um, excited. <laughs> that doesn't excited mean they're wrong. See. No, I know everyone's into different things. We we couldn't get into the old ones. That's why we like the new ones. So I hope this will be so. I yeah another one that we like. So we'll see. And I really this I think beats Baldur's Gate for. Well, I, I think because also hype. we're pretty sure it's coming out. I mean, and that's definitely... probably part of it. Is like well, yeah. I don't know when I'm playing Baldur's Gate, right. but I know that on March 26th I'm playing two games actually. Oh yeah, it takes two comes out the same day as Monster Hunter Rise, which, sucks. which is very funny. It's funny and it sucks. <laughs> Two co-op games go head to head on one Friday in March. <laughs> and two co-op games I'm very excited about. Yeah. Uh, so I imagine it'll be more we'll probably end up doing like two mini games in It Takes Two and then one hunt in Monster Hunter, and that's our night. I- I'm excited. It will it'll be a good Dude, I can't wait for Monster year. Hunter. Have we seen the insect glaive yet? Is that in there? I don't know. Ah, I kinda hope it is. I love that weapon. So that's twenty twenty. That's twenty twenty one. Well, yes, I meant to say 
everything we talked about was also 2020. <laughs> That's right. That's the wrap up. That's the wrap up of our 2020. The shout outs that just games we want to talk about that are cool because games are cool and we you know. Like games. And all I gotta say about 2021 is everyone's like trying to fit tragedies into years and that's just not how it works i'm the same way i like a clean slate you know i like to pretend like 2021's all it's a whole new life right you're saying like everyone's like oh 2021's gonna just get us out of this year right right that type of, right, right yeah that's i get it though i get it because i'm the same way but you yeah. have to re- just don't be disappointed because the struggle will continue and don't that's okay when it's, it's gonna be okay <laughs> things are gonna get better things are in 2021 be uh what why would you say that? Well, I well, just some said... things are going to get better and some things are going to get worse. You got to anyway. ride the middle. You got to understand there's a middle. You got to strive for the better, but be prepared for the worst. That's right. So I guess you took my message and that's all right. Yeah. That happens. Sometimes people take what you want for yourself and you have to accept <laughs> it because, you know, in the long run, you're better than them. Did something happen to you? What? No, I don't know. <laughs> So that's <laughs> I just before we close it up, one last shout out, and that's to you listening to this. Thank Aww, you. Oh, okay. That's that's awesome. I don't know. You I still listened. can't. That's great. Dude, two people listen to this. I don't care. That's great. Yeah. That's I'm excited. Thank you very much. I make much. it for you. I make it for me. I make it for me you too. You just happen to tune in. Once yeah. In. <laughs> um, but here's to our fourth year. Our fourth year coming up because we started in the beginning of 2018, so we did. 18, That's 19, pretty impressive. 20. I'm literally shocked we have made it this far. I know. and But you know what's kind of sad? Because we switched to uh, monthly for a while, for a long while, we're only at 59. Like It's not that sad to I, me. I guess 59 is actually a lot now that Quality I say it out loud. Quality over quantity, man. Definitely. But also 59 is still a lot. That's 59 a heck is of a lot. Of episodes. <laughs> 59 is a lot. For some reason in my brain, it feels like we don't have that many episodes, but... Don't Whoa. let the, you know, I feel like on the internet, people are like content grinders, you know, it's just oh, no, like, put bad. it in the Don't grindstone. Bad. I'm going to make 700 episodes, you know, that ain't us. But yeah, you're right. Quality over quantity. But at the same time, dude, we got a quantity. Look at that number. It's a good number. Right. Don't, don't shirk the qual- the quantity we have. So do we know what episode 60 is going to be? Have we planned that out? Can we tease the folks? I mean, I think probably it should be part-time UFO because we actually finished okay. that. Yeah, you're right. We should probably do that. And then next Sackboy, next Hyrule or something like that. Yeah. That's what we got on the, on the docket That's here. That's on the docket, on the shrocket. Did we do Factorio? <laughs> that was our yes. last episode, wasn't it? Yes, <laughs> that was the last episode. <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure. Yeah, part-time UFO is probably coming up next. So look forward to that. Check it out before you even listen if you wish. It's yeah, check it out. Get your own thoughts. It's only like eight bucks or something. It's yeah, cheap. I, and I bet it goes on sale around Christmas. That's just a guess. I don't have any idea. Uh, yeah, eShop sales ain't great. That's for sure. Or they're really great and they sell things for a penny and you'll never know about and it you don't yeah you can't find it because you gotta else follow is the for cheap nintendo deals on twitter or something <laughs> hey grace mm-hmm. i have a question what's that do you think you could tell me where i can tell them to find us on the internet okay well check us out at savestogether.club which we launched in 2020 that's true another shout out to 2020 shout out to 2020 we our savestogether.club where you can find links to our social media and all our episodes you can also find list.savestogether.club which is uh, the list of co-op games we recommend. Saves Together recommends it. We finally did it a couple episodes back, but it's been launched. It's out there. Send that list to your friends and family when they ask for co-op games. And you can also follow us over on Twitter and Instagram at Saves Together for updates. Awesome. Well, that's the episode and that's the year. That's the year. We'll see you in 2021 we'll where games you. will still come out and we will still play them. You can bet on that no matter what. I don't know if anything else is going to happen next year. That's good. But I know we will play games. Right. That's true. And we <laughs> probably will see movies because they're doing the whole Warner, that whole drama. I don't want to talk about, want to talk about that. I didn't, wa- I didn't watch a lot of movies this year for that reason. It's very sad. Well, no movies came out, really. I mean, some did, but. Some did. Because the whole thing. There My no movie of the year was Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, actually, we did look back through. Grace is very good at Bujo stuff, bullet journals, and she keeps a list of all the movies we saw in theaters. Do you do movies we watch at home, too? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but sometimes it, I, I lose track, but I anyways, try to. We tr- I asked her, could you just bring up all the movies we thought we saw in theaters this year? And like, it's like two. No, that's not true. There's like, <laughs> like four. There's like five. And Little Sonic Women. the Hedgehog might be the number one. The last movie we saw before theaters shut down was Ride Your Wave, which I didn't expect and I forgot about. It was oh, an anime movie. That one I can't suggest because I love it, 
I really enjoyed my time with it, but it was a doozy. And we went and got um, Japanese food. It was really good. I had taiyaki for the first time. <sighs> that made me hungry. All right, let's you go. Had takoyaki, but <laughs> what? Technically, you had takoyaki. But... I also had a taiyaki. Remember, it had mochi it? and atsuki okay. beans, and you tried it, and you're like, oh, not so bad with the mochi. Still bad, though. I forgot. You, so you don't remember. Okay, just don't tell me I didn't have it because I did. I forgot. And then we also had the other thing. All right, we're cutting that That out. I can't say. Um, well, you're cutting out all the food? Yeah. Because we're already wrapped up. Fine. But yeah, we saw like five movies. Okay. <laughs> what, fuck, fuck this. Whatever. Yeah, I saw like five movies. <laughs> fuck this. Fuck, I'm done. Thanks, everybody, for listening. See you see next ya. year. This podcast has been brought to you by the Popeye's Chicken Sandwich. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> doot, doot. The chicken is in a can. Doot, doot. What? Not. I didn't know. <laughs> and that's been our ad. What if Popeye's really sponsored us? Should we leave this in so they can see? <laughs> Let's leave this in. Oh, and Hashtag that way ad. Popeye's can see how good we'd be at it. Okay. The chicken sandwich is so delectable. You'll be saying... Give me another. Give me me spinach. No, I want me chicken. <laughs> Look at my arms. Don't get the fries. Get the mashed potatoes. Silly olive oil. Come here and kiss your boy, Popeye. I'm Popeye the sailor man. Hong Kong. <laughs> Does he say Hong Kong? At the end? I think he's, yeah. Yeah, doesn't he like, <laughs> and it comes out of his pipe too. I thought that was Willy the mouse. Yeah, Willy the mouse. <laughs> The steam I'm mouse. Willie the steamboat mouse. No, the steamboat mouse. Yeah, you know, Willie before the Mickey. Mouse. What was his name? Willie the steamboat mouse. All right, moving on.